This is from Inspector Holtz and the Common People. I opened the envelope, pulled out a card and grunted in surprise as I read it. It's from Colonel Squire. He's invited me to a reception at Sorenchester Manor tomorrow evening. It looks like I'm moving into higher circles of society. You too, if you'd like to come. It says Mr. Andrew Caplet plus one. The Colonel was the wealthiest man in the region and I was astonished he even knew of my existence. Though Daphne and I had once, at great personal risk, thwarted one of his dodgy business schemes. Daphne shrugged. Don't get too excited. It's all part of his effort to butter up local people so they accept his development without too much fuss. He's inviting anyone with local influence. Why do you say that? I asked, peeved by her lack of enthusiasm. Because I got one last week, as did all the museum staff. Why didn't you tell me? I wasn't interested and didn't think you would be either. Don't forget, Squire nearly got us killed. I haven't forgotten, I said with a shudder. I'll reply that we can't make it. Um, but if he's inviting those with influence, why me? Because, my love, you write for the local newspaper. But Ralph's hardly likely to ask me to report on the development. That'd be Basil's job. She smiled. Squire probably doesn't know that. Admit it, you were flattered to receive an invitation. Maybe a little. Besides, I've sometimes wondered what the manor looks like inside. I put the card to one side as Daphne turned on the television to watch a documentary about Viking culture. Once upon a time, I wouldn't have been interested, but she'd almost convinced me that the past was a universe of infinite amazement, and I looked forward to watching. Anyway, I'd once overheard Pinky, her astonishingly beautiful friend, telling Sid Sharples, her vampire lover and our bank manager, that she thought I had a touch of the Norseman about me. She might have been right. A couple of red hairs had sprouted in the ill-advised and short-lived moustache I'd cultivated the previous November. I could picture myself as Andy the Red, standing proud in the prow of a Viking longship, providing I ignored my tendency to seasickness. On waking the following morning, I changed my mind and decided to accept the invitation. After all, where was the harm? I held firm to the principles of honest journalism when I could get away with it, and I was not the sort to be bought off with a few drinks and nibbles. I would go, satisfy my curiosity, gather facts and write an article in any case. Although unconvinced, Daphne agreed to accompany me, if only to keep me out of trouble. I emailed our acceptance and spent the rest of the day mooching about the house, watching daytime telly and still not back to my sparkling best. By early evening when Daphne returned, I'd revived enough to be looking forward to the evening. The invitation stipulated smart casual dress, which I made into a problem since my wardrobe comprised three categories. Smart, casual or ancient relics. There was no overlap. In the end, tired of my dithering, Daphne told me to shut up and put on a suit, explaining that it was better to go a little overdressed than to feel scruffy. And if that did not feel sufficiently casual, I could always not wear a tie. I took her advice. I owned several good suits that rarely saw the light of day, though it still freaked me out that they'd once belonged to Mr. Mrs. Goodfellow's husband, Robin, who we'd last heard of working as a deckhand on a Mombasa ferry. All his cast-offs fitted me as if they'd been made to measure, and I suspected my Lord Schmidt, Hobbs's hard-pressed tailor, had been responsible, though he had never measured me, at least not to my knowledge. Daphne never had a problem with dressing for the occasion, and always looked fabulous whatever she wore, though I may have been biased. So while I faffed about, taking forever to decide which socks went with my suit, she picked out a simple pale blue dress that complemented her soft brown hair and was ready within ten minutes. When I was finally satisfied with my appearance, it was time to go. I suggested a taxi, but since the evening was pleasantly warm for early April, Daphne suggested a walk. We set off for Sorenchester Manor. A minute later, I ran home to pick up a notebook and pen. Are you sure we've got everything now? She asked when I rejoined her. I nodded. 
What about your invitation? It said to bring it. 